All right, all right, we're back. How are you doing, everybody? Uh, it's August the 3rd, Tuesday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Time. One hour to go before the market shuts down for the day. How you doing? We're back for more fun, fun, fun. How are we going to close this day out? What an hour to go before the market shuts down for the kooky, crazy day today. Uh, the uh, Robinhood stock, $46 a share, up eight thirty eight. That That's kooky right there. Completely kooky. Um, this was as low as $32 on the day they went public. I think it was uh, easily 33 for sure. Anyway, uh, 45.92, crazy. SoFi, 15.04, uh, they make money. Robinhood doesn't. Um, go figure. Uh, you know, they're, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, GameStop, 150.50, uh, down 7.15 a share. Uh, ATIP, up 63.5 cents a share to 4 38 and a half. Thank you very much. ATIP having a good day today. Holding these gains um, more or less all the way through the high. 447 now at 438. Pretty good performance. 8.2 million traded today. 8.2 million. Uh, that is buying coming in here, picking off all this cheap paper. It is just just buying it up, buying it up, buying up. That is not idle, uh, you know, um, hanging around town. Some Something, somebody, somewhere is orchestrating a buy-up, and I, I don't know who it is, I don't know what, but I, I can guess, maybe, possibly, something's going on here. Maybe there's something going on where uh, whoever's buying this paper up, now it could be, you know, could be friends of the company, could be friends of friend, people who know them well, I, I don't know. Um, it, it could be anyone in that sense. It could be a Ryan Cohen kind of person. Can you imagine if this was being gobbled up by a Ryan Cohen kind of guy, girl, group, just buying up the stock yesterday and today, just picking it up, picking it up, buying up millions of shares, giveaway prices below book value, I'm sure. They're looking at the future. They see what the potential is. 38,000 clinics in the United States, most are tiny one-off clinics. These guys are the number one independent clinic operator in, in America, 900 odd locations. Um, you know, I, I can see these guys, whoever whoever this is, 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 is buying up the paper, maybe, maybe, buying it all up here, Four odd dollars, four twenty-five, four thirty-five, four fifty a share. Just buying it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give me to. You. Give me all you got. And um, stop buying when it gets to about six bucks. And at that point, they're sitting on $20, 30 million shares, and they got themselves a nice uh, 10, 12, 15 percent stake in the company. Whatever the number is, I, I don't know. Um, and uh, become a member of the board. Bring a couple board members along for the ride. Bring some money people along, and let's get this company going. Um, could it be that that's what's happening with ATIP? Things happen quick in this world. Maybe that's what's going on. I don't know. 439 right now, 440. We're going higher. Uh, this stock isn't going to sit here. That's <laughs> not going to happen. It's not going to sit here. So there you go. Uh, let's see what's going on. Um, those of you who are commenting on all the articles you're reading about ATIP, those are not articles. There are no articles being written about ATIP. What's happening is there are a bunch of paid for news announcements being paid by law firms to announce that they're looking into improprieties of the company and they're they're fishing for customers. They're fishing for lawsuit people, people who want to sue the company. That's what's going on. <clears throat> and uh, there are no articles on the company. There are no, there's no like a whole bunch of uh, articles slamming the company. It's, it's not happening at all. It's just a bunch of law firms looking to advertise their services, hoping people will call the 800 number uh, to perhaps open a file. Maybe they'll send them a, a security deposit, some kind of a retainer, and these law firms will try to make some money. They're in for the money. They're in to try to get some clientele, make some bucks. 441 a share right now, uh, up 66 cents, and uh, don't be surprised if it goes back to 650 a share. Just, just don't be. Uh, not this, this kind of volume. Eight point two million shares. This isn't like, oh yeah, well you know I'll buy a little bit of stock and see what happens. No, 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 no. This, this kind of buying is. Um, let's grab this stuff while we can, as much as we can now, uh, because this will not stay here very long. This whole mark, the market cap of the whole company, is nine hundred fourteen million dollars. This, this is a joke. Uh, the, the, there's. This thing's cheap. Uh, I, I could be off on my numbers because I don't yet know if these systems have the total number of shares outstanding. But irregardless, at 440 a share, this is a joke. And um, um, 880 a share would make a little more sense. But I understand there are people who are upset with financials. They're upset with a lot of communication. I get it. I know. 
but this stock is not going to stay here much longer. There is my prediction. Anyway, there you go. Let's see. Uh, SoFi down 66 cents. Man, what's going on here? 1506. GameStop 15080. Um, let's see. AMC has been down all day, and it is still down. 173. It's not bad down. It's not like it's getting crushed, but it's drying out. Uh, 54 million shares of volume slowing down. Uh, we're just not getting any more here. Um, it's not uh, not great. Uh, so, <clears throat> 3348, the, the doldrums continue. Matterport, uh, down 72 cents on the day at 1516 at the moment. The low today was 1455 at 10 o'clock this morning, right after the opening. We have been meandering around 15 ish ever since. We're now 1516. Uh, we're obviously, uh, you know, 60 something cents higher than the low of the day, but we're down 72 cents on the day. The shares rebounded to about 1535 uh, at the best. That's the best they could recover to, 1535 after dropping down to 1455 a share. So we now need another 19 cents to equal the best price of the day since the crash or the, the, the drop off this morning. That's what we need. And uh, <clears throat> 1516 on 1. 1.3 million shares traded. We'll keep an eye on that. If Matterport can break 35, it can break 1535 it could go it could go higher than that in nicely but it's got to get there first i don't know 23 and me 862 up 39 cents uh we are um uh we we had a, a drop off in the first 15 minutes just like on matterport except the difference here is this stock recovered and went higher matterport did not this stock dropped at 791 this morning it is now 862. We are talking 71 cents higher than the low of the day all day. And it's been as high as 884. So th this has had another okay day today. 1.6 million. No news. Don't get excited. There's nothing being talked about. But this is the best level in a week. This hasn't been this, this stock hasn't been this high for a week. I'm not saying it's the breakout of all time, but we are looking better here since about. Oh my, last time we were in this neighborhood, uh, July 26th, August the 3rd. So it's it's over a week. Let's uh, let's hope for a little more uh, recovery. Come on, Emmy, baby. You know you can do it. You've got it in you. Fifth Wall is up two cents. V Vector Acquisition is down two cents. Navsite unchanged. Uh, six stair up, down 33 cents to 8.54, and making everybody angry, including me. I can't tell you why it's down. I can't tell you when it's going to go up. I can't tell you what's going to make it happen. I, I, I have no idea what they're doing. They, they, they seem to be uh, content to be a public company. That's not good enough. We, we don't want contentness. We want action. We want to know what you're up to. You went through all this money, all this expense, all this effort to go public. Now talk to us about it. Talk to me, baby. Um, Vanic Vectors up $1.88. A Home Depot up four sixty seven. IBM up two ninety two at one forty four thirty four. We've been as high as one forty four seventy today. The stock got talked up today at the halftime report on CNBC. It's going higher. Analysts over there are saying I'd still be a buyer of this right now. They're telling people to buy it. Do not sell any calls if you have any calls on IBM. This this is going to continue up quite a ways yet. Uh, new high for the year would be nice. Uh, the all time high one fifty two eighty four. So. How would you be doing if they hit 150? Would you be all right with your puts and, I mean, with your calls? Would you be up there? If any of you wrote puts, you'd be doing fine, too. Uh, Dow up 243 right now at 35,081. The all-time high for this market, 35,192. We're 111 points away from a new all-time high. That's all it is, 111 points. We're up 240 here. We could do this today. I mean, we, we could gain 111 points in the next hour, no problem. That is not a lot from here, but I'm not saying it's going to happen, but we were as low as 714, 34, 714. So have we come on? Yeah, we sure have 300 and about 60 points higher than the low of the day. If I got my math correct, maybe I don't have my math correct. Uh, I think I'm kind of close. Uh, 714 and uh, at about uh, 86, and that's a 286, and then uh, 80 more. Yeah, we're 300. Yeah, we're we're up over 350 points from the low of the day today. It's a nice little recovery on the Dow here. Uh, we're getting a movement upwards, uh, upward movement on S and P 500. We're up 32 there. Nasdaq up 61. So both of these, uh, all these indexes are are powering higher, nicely higher. Uh, we're up uh, three quarters of a point on the Dow and the S and P. Half a percentage point, just under a half. 
on NASDAQ. It's not like a powerful 3% group gain across the board where everything's going great, but it's it's a good day. It's a good day. Microsoft up a buck 93, Apple up 207, Tesla up a dollar 78, um, Bed Bath Beyond up 26 cents, Blackberry down 4, Royal Caribbean down 193, 194ish, earnings are per- supposed to come out tomorrow. Norwegian down 50 cents, Carnival down 15, Amazon up 27 bucks, Facebook uh, down 71 cents, Google Alphabet down $3, JP Morgan up a buck 89, Goldman Sachs up 222 a share. They were way off. They're now at 380. They were down to 371. That's a $9 turnaround on Goldman Sachs today, midday. That reflects the Dow exactly. That exactly mirrors what the Dow was doing today. It really came on. I like it. Uh, we've got uh, Robin Hood now at 45.62. SoFi at 1516 with a little pop here, just the tiniest little. Eh, we were down to 1502. Now 1517, a little better. Still down 56 cents. And ATIP at 440. There you go. Uh, what can I say uh, about all of that? Um, hey, uh, Zach is saying, I'd be seven in the money with IBM at 151, Bruce. Uh, now you're talking. Uh, we'd like to see that happen in the next couple of days, uh, but uh, you know who, who, who knows? Who knows? We'll see what happens here. Um, now, at first, I was upset with ATIP, but now I averaged down, and now I have a thousand shares at a cost of under five bucks. The covered calls will be tremendous. There you go. Hi from Las Vegas, SPA. How you doing? Uh, nice to see you. Um, let's see what else have we got. Uh, what else is going on? What else is going on? What else is going on? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. When the price went up, the law firm put on a reminder alert. This price went up even more. Uh, people don't, they, most people don't pay attention to these. These are everywhere. These law alerts are bunk. They're BS. Uh, they're just law firms looking to raise money. They're trying to raise clientele awareness. They're, they're hustling for business. That's all they're doing. And there is nothing there to get there. Uh, the, if they tried to sue these guys in open court, it would take them five years to get in front of a judge. They'll spend hundreds of thousands of legals to get there. The public company has insurance against all this kinds of stuff. There, there's nothing to get there. It is a waste, a complete waste of life. Uh, but these law firms, they, uh, they're out there. I mean, there's no question about it. And uh, they pile in. And uh, it looks terrible, but it just disappears into the, into the ether. Uh, a couple of weeks later, no one even talks about it anymore. The stock just does what it does. And at you know, 440 a share, it's better looking than at 280, uh, 280 uh, what was it, 281. That was the low, 281. So it looking a lot better now. Uh, anyone who bought at 280, 285, 290, three bucks, they're smiling right now. You're smiling, uh, especially if you ever really average this thing off. Anyway, what are you going to do? Uh, the Dow now up 238, uh, S&P up 30, NASDAQ up 55, oil down 53 cents a barrel to 70 73 that's what we have going on here uh very interesting um yeah robin hood 4564 uh insanity on robin hood absolute total insanity um dumb money anyone buying this stuff at 4859 which is the high of the day that's dumb money real dumb money um don't come don't come crying to me uh, and and don't be blaming gamestop for this thing because this thing is on its own man this is this this entity does not even d- deserve to be alive. I can't believe it that people are putting money into these joke these jokers. They are. Uh, it's amazing. Um, anyway, what can I say? Uh, let's see. Uh, it says here, hey Uncle Bruce, when SVAC merged, I ended up getting three warrants along with my ten shares. Uh, each warrant is worth one seventy one each. Right now, what are my options here? You can sell them. Uh, just Take the money, you know, dump them off. You can do that. You can hold them if you want. Uh, uh, you know, if the shares go higher, uh, great. Um, you know, it's Starboard. There, it's now Sextera. Uh, you know, it's a little, a call it a gift if you want. Uh, you're happy with the shares you have. Dump these. Take the money and just add it to your account. And never mind. Don't worry about it. Um, it's just, there it is. Uh, uh, Let's see here. Uh, yeah, well, you know, Kev, I hear you. Uh, Kev saying most of GameStop AMC followers either trade or started trading on Robinhood. There's a lot of new investors that love the app and will love to tra- love the stock too. Yeah, well, you know, uh, that's great. Uh, but you know, back in January and February, when these guys were screwing investors, not letting them trade their own stock with cash, 
uh, that uh, that uh, showed me how 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 close they were to being bankrupt, and they're not that far better off right now. They really aren't. They're not that much richer right now. Um, I don't know. What can I say? You mentioned writing puts on MTTR. I did not. I mentioned buying. Uh, uh, sorry, I did mention. I apologize. I did mention writing puts on MTTR. Yes, I did. Uh, Matterport. I did talk about writing put contracts on Matterport, and the idea would be to perhaps write fifteen dollar puts on uh, on Matterport, uh, good for a month or two, and and take the premium, and uh, uh, you'd probably get a buck or something like that, and you would be uh, committing. Uh, you would make a commitment to buy stock at fifteen dollars, but you would be paid for the commitment by receiving a premium right now for the for that commitment. Um, and uh, that might not be a bad play. It was just a question of what kind of uh, premium could you get. Uh, that was the trick. Now, if you're going to write August the 20th uh, put contracts, which are the, the the only puts available for October uh, for August right now, you would receive um, about oh, let's see, 90, 90 cents, 95 cents, maybe uh, around 90, 95 cents, um, which means you you would be paying about 14.10 for the stock. Uh, if you were to be exercised, if you were to um, uh, take a uh, take a shot at maybe uh, writing uh, September 15s, you would be paid about a dollar fifty, dollar sixty up put. So, dollar sixty less from the fifteen dollar price would mean a thirteen forty commitment on your part. You'd be looking to buy Matterport at thirteen forty if you were exercised. Are you comfortable paying thirteen forty for Matterport between now and September 17? There you go with all the promotion coming. What these guys are going to do, uh, do you think the shares, if the shares go to 16 to 18, just that, only that, that's not even a big move, but just that, these contracts uh, would die worthless. You get to keep all buck 60 a share. Now, $1.60 doesn't sound like a lot of money, but we're talking about a $14.95 stock. And you're bringing in a $1.60 premium. That's, that's more than 10% of your money. That's a nice little return for now to September 17th. If you did have to buy the stock at thirteen dollars and forty cents, in other words, fifteen dollar exercise with this one sixty, you're paying thirteen forty. You could at that point uh, just sell them, or you could at that point turn around and write a fifteen dollar call contract, good for maybe a couple of months. You probably haul in the buck fifty right there, which would get you back to if you were to exercise out, you'd be exercised out at sixteen fifty. Bought at thirteen forty, selling at sixteen fifty, you're making ten. Three ten a share on the whole on the overall commitment. Um, never did you own any of the stock. You don't have to own any of the MTTR to do this on Matterport. You can write a put against Matterport if you wish, uh, without owning any of the stock. You just have to have enough margin to be able to buy the stock at net thirteen forty for a hundred thirteen hundred forty dollars for one hundred shares. Now, if you want to write ten contracts, five or nine or twenty two or sixty eight, whatever number you want to buy. You want to write that many? You can write ten of them for dollar sixty a piece. You would get uh, one hundred sixty dollars times ten contracts, sixteen hundred bucks in cash. And for sixteen hundred in cash, you would be scoring that in your pocket until uh, as of September the seventeenth. It would all be yours, free and clear. If the shares stay above fifteen a share between now and that time, at that time. Now they can go below in the meantime. They can go higher. They can trade. They'll fluctuate, as you know they do. But if the shares are over fifteen dollars a share, you're a winner. If they're even over thirteen fifty, you're a winner because if you have to buy them at fifteen, you're actually only paying thirteen forty. You're up a dime, and I'm not taking into account any expenses or commissions or any handling fees from your broker. All that's so obviously I've taken off the table. But if the shares went to fourteen bucks and you had to buy them, you have a sixty cent a share cushion on a thousand shares. That's six hundred dollars cushion to cover your fees. Now you wouldn't be paying those kinds of fees. You'd make money. So even if the stock didn't perform, I sound like William Shatner, even if the, sh if the shares didn't perform, you'd make money. Uh, if I sound like Jerry Seinfeld, but if the shares go over 15, you'll make money. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Any celebrity will tell you the same thing, depending on who's who's imitating who. Uh, all right. <laughs> Charles C., thank you, Charles, for the donation. I appreciate it, buddy. Uh, you're awesome, man. <laughs> Uh, hey, Uncle Bruce, I took my $1,700 profit selling Matterport. I reinvested a Matterport by buying five puts uh, at 15 strike price for 320 for January 22. What is the break-even sell point? Uh, 
So you bought five puts on Matterport. So you're, you're going a negative on Matterport at 15. That's what you're doing, right? Uh, for January 2022. So let's take a look at January 2022. Uh, where are we at here on these puts right now? I show them at uh, 320 last trade. 295 to 320 is the market on Matterport. $15 puts. So you own them. You're long uh, uh, $15 puts. Uh, so um, you need the stock to drop in price uh, to make money. Um, and uh, if the shares were to go down to ten, uh, these puts would be worth five dollars book value. You'd be you'd be ahead of the curve. Uh, but if they drop drop down to like uh, fourteen dollars or thirteen dollars, you're going to lose money. Uh, but you have until January for a, a you know a, a pullback. Uh, so are you betting against Matterport? Fair enough. If you were to have written these call these puts, if you had been a writer of these puts instead of a buyer, uh, then you would have right now a premium of three twenty uh, contract in your hand. You'd have sixteen hundred dollars in your hand right now, which uh, puts you to co commits you to buy the stock at fifteen. But uh, since you've been given three twenty a share, you're only paying eleven eighty to buy the stock. Not a bad bet either, uh, but it is a long time to wait, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, anyway, good luck to you on that one. Uh, you can make money. Uh, you could lose money. I don't know. Let's we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. Um, if you have, uh, if you uh, if you use Fidelity, you need to have options enabled. Level One level is for calls. Another level is for puts. Okay. Um, and uh, Matthew, I tried to get higher options level at Fidelity to write puts, and Fidelity lowered my options level. Now I can't even buy options. Well, that's ridiculous. Um, and let's see, why have all the stacks tanked, tanked since merging? Uh, can't answer these questions. Uh, <clears throat> what is going on here? Uh, think or swim, and uh, as William Shatner rant. <laughs> Uh, are there any Fidelity options users here? Please help to write uh, to write uh, put. Which level do I need? I just reapplied to get level three, but don't seem to have that option at the moment. Um, okay, uh, yeah, can't help you there. Where are we at here on the markets now? We're at uh, we're up 260 on the Dow. We're at the high of the day. S and P up 33. Nasdaq up 59. So there you have it. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, yeah, on Fidelity, just fill out another options applications, and you have to say you can tolerate the risk when they ask you that, I guess. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, uh, moving on, where are you going? Where are you going? Um, where do you write a call? All I see is buy and sell. To write a call is sell to open, or to write a put, sell to open is your transaction. To buy a call is buy to open. To sell a call is sell to open. To buy a put is buy to open. To sell, to write a put, sell a put, sell to open. That's how you do it. Um, <clears throat> do you need to own shares to sell puts? You do not. Um, let's see. Uh, um, yeah, we have finally the day for VACQ and it drops. <laughs> um, and... Um, and uh, here we go. Sir, for a newbie uh, with zero knowledge about finance and markets, how much time should one spend to learn all the important things before diving into trading? Well, you can, on some of these apps, you can actually do paper trading and you can actually uh, try and do some trading without using any capital. Depends on the firm you're using. I think uh, TD Ameritrade definitely has that. I'm not sure about Fidelity, but that might be a way to go. Another way to go is to watch uh, some of my classes to get a handle on some of this stuff. Um, I just uploaded between the first show and this show. I just did upload lesson number seven, how to write put contracts. You might look. You might want to look at that class and get a better level uh, handle on that. Um, let's see. Uh, people are talking about different levels that you need at different firms to be able to trade. Weeble has paper trading. There you go. Thinkorswim has paper trading. There you go. So you can you can you know you can do some paper trading to see how it how it works for you. You can get, try some of these. And uh, you know, try a week or two of, of paper trading and see what you think of it, what you like of it, uh, how it works, how it looks. Go from there. Um, okay, uh, let's see. And uh, yeah, Fidelity uses a demo account. And uh, thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome indeed. Um, we're still up 264 on the Dow. Looking pretty good here. Um, and. Uh, uh, Uncle Bruce, I bought the ATIP dip and I could not be happier. Right on. 
Beautiful. Uh, Douglas uh, says you get 250,000 paper, so you can play with all kinds of paper. Um, ATIP now 440, up 65 cents a share today. Uh, the high of the day, 447. And we've had 8.5 million shares trade on ATIP. Just think about that, 8.5 million. If 5 million of that is a buyer just gobbling it up, you got to wonder uh, just who that is and how much they're getting. And, oh, man, there could be some interesting stuff happening. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. We'll see what uh, what's going on. Yep, ATIP dip. The dip was great on ATIP. Um, and I, I was sitting on three GE shares I bought years ago. They did an eight-for-one reverse stock split. They charged me $38 reorganization fee, and I have no GE in my portfolio. Is that normal? Uh, man, I... This is uh, this is goofy. Uh, I I have no idea what to uh, what to tell you on this one. You're gonna have to call the broker and figure that one out. Fred B. Uh, no, not all. Bought all. Uh, no, not at all. Bought call option on SoFi October 15, 20 bucks down. Have value now. Uh, bought a call option on SoFi uh, down. T uh, Twenty bucks down. Have value now. I'm trying to figure out what that means, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, yeah, Interactive Brokers gives you a million dollar paper trading account as standard. And that's uh, that's it. That was my first. That was my first uh, option, Fred. Is that what you were saying to me? I don't know, Jennifer. Hey, Uncle Bruce, could you explain the difference between owning shares of Matterport versus not owning shares and to writing a put? I'm looking to bring in some profit with 100 shares I own. Okay, so if, if you have shares of Matterport and they go up a dollar, you make a you make a hundred dollars. If you have 100 shares, you make a hundred dollars, right? A dollar a share. You have 15 shares, they go up a dollar, you've made $15. Fair enough. All right, so every share you have, you make a buck. If you write a put contract against Matterport, as an example, and you write a, a put contract that's a $15 contract, all right? And let me take a look at, uh, again, just the market here. Um, there's a, there's a, August the 20th is the earliest expiry date available for any options on Matterport that I can see here. If you sold a $15 put contract or wrote a $15 put contract on Matterport to expire August the 20th, it has a value of between 85 cents and a dollar a share right now. That seems to be the, the approximate value of the Matterport contract. Um, so if you, you sell it, you write it, you're bringing in uh, let's say 90 cents, of, you're bringing in $90, okay? It's 90 cents a share, okay? So you don't have any stock. You write a put. You're now um, potentially long 100 shares of Matterport if you get exercised. Um, if the shares drop from here, $14.99, $15 level, and they drop down in value between now and, and then by the time August the 20th rolls around, if they're trading under $15, you will be, quote, assigned the shares. They will put the shares to you because you, you wrote a put contract. They will put the stock at you. Well, they'll give it to you or sell it to you at $15 a share. You must buy it at $15 a share, except that you've already received $90 a share, 90 cents a share, for the stock for writing the contract as a compensation to write it. So you're on the hook to pay $14.10 to buy 100 shares of Matterport. So if you own 100 right now and you write a put against the 100, you're using your existing Matterport as collateral to buy another 100 at net 1410 until September, until August 20th and no longer than August the 20th. If the shares close at $15 or one penny higher than that, 1501 or 1502 or higher than that, no one is going to assign you any stock because there is no need to set to make you buy stock at 15 when it's trading at 1501 on the open market in effect the 90 cents you received you keep that's 90 bucks in your pocket to offer to buy the stock but you never you never were uh, made to buy it that's how that contract works so in in reality you can play your thinking is if the shares go higher the put call track contract will go lower in value and expire worthless you get to keep the premium. Now, if you were to write a September 15 put a little longer out, obviously this one would be September 17th. So that would be uh, eight weeks, uh, seven weeks in length. You'll be paid $1.50 to $1.65. You might get a buck sixty for that one. 
60, 70 cents more than the other one, but you got to wait a month longer to get it. See, so time is worth more money. It's the same strike price. It's just worth more money. On the other hand, uh, you could write a put contract for September 17th. That is a 1250 put contract where you would agree to buy the stock for 1250 a share. You would only be paid between 40 and 55 cents for that contract because after all, the stock is at about $15 and this contract is a 1250. So you're 250 out of the money, which means obviously you're not going to buy any stock until it, unless it were to drop down to 1250 or less. But even if you did have to buy it and you did get say 50 cents for that contract, you get to use the 50 cents against the 12.50 you're actually paying $12 for the stock. So, if you're happy to buy 100 shares at $12, you could write a put contract at uh, 12.50 put contract for September the 17th and bring in 50 bucks. Again, the 50 is yours if you let the option expire worthless if that's what it does. Conversely, you could write a 17.50 contract. You could write a contract that's in the money. Because you're saying, oh, no, 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 this, this Matterport's going higher than $15 a share by the time September 17th rolls around. This stock's going to be $18 to $20 by the time seven weeks comes and goes. You write a 1750 contract, daring them to sell you the stock at 1750 Well, you will get right now, right at this minute, anywhere from 320 to 340 a share. So they will pay you 320 to 340 to uh, commit to buying the stock at 1750 if they choose to give it to you or hit you with it. Uh, obviously, um, uh, this deal, uh, um, um, let's say you ended up getting, I don't know, let's say you got uh, three, 330 for the contract. Just I'm some, somewhere in the middle here is what I'm trying to figure out. If you got 330 for the contract, you're paying 1420 because you got to take the 330 off the 1750. You're getting 330 bucks now, and you're going to have to pay 1750 to get the stock. But you're really on the hook for fourteen hundred twenty bucks ballpark. If you can get three fifty for the contract, you're on the hook for uh, fourteen dollars for the contract for the stock, right? But if you're right, and the shares go up in price from where they are now, they go up to the maybe the uh, let's say they just go to sixteen dollars. They only go up a dollar between now and September the seventeenth. They only go up a buck to sixteen bucks. You wrote a 1750 contract. You're on the hook for 1750. You have to buy that stock for 1750 unless you buy your contract back, which you can do anytime you want. But let's say you don't. You just wait till the end and you just say, assign me. I dare you to assign. Okay, they sell you the stock at 1750. Well, you have 350 in the bank. So you only need $1,400 to get the stock, but it's trading at 16. So the minute you get it, you can then just sell the stock at $16 and pocket your $200 differential. You've made $200 on this contract trade. You sold them at $350. They're only worth a buck fifty at the end because the stock went up to $16 and you're only on the hook for $17.50. Okay? So that's how you can make $200 on the $350 option right. You can go further out. You can write an October contract. You want to write an October 15? You'll get between two and two fifteen a share. You're on the hook for $12.85 to $13 a share if you write that contract. If you write a October 15th, $12.50 put contract, that $12.50 put contract at say 80 cents net to you, you're prepared to pay $11.70 for the stock. There you go. Would you be happy paying $11.70 for Matterport? Even if it went down to $12.50? There you go. Well, they're giving you 85 cents a contract for that right now if you have enough money in the bank where you can buy or you can quote right sell five of these or ten of these hey um, you want to write the fifteen dollar uh, put contract for october the 15th five times you're going to get a thousand dollars two bucks a piece at least you get a thousand bucks but you're obligated to buy seventy five hundred dollars worth of stock at 15 a share until october 15 or sooner if you get exercised so if the shares go down to 1250 in one day and then they bounce back to 13 the next day, you might get assigned at 15. Well, you only paid 13 for it because you got $2 a share up front, but you're still kind of right at the money. But you have to decide you're prepared to do that. That's the gamble you're taking. But if you like what Matterport is about and you believe that Matterport's earnings in the next week or so and their, their conference call and then their, their other news releases will just inch the market higher and higher and higher, well, then you'll you'll write the put and 
not worry about being assigned the stock because the likelihood is you're right. This goes to 15 and a half, 16 and a half, 18 and a half, 20 bucks. It doesn't matter. It's anything over $15, you keep all $2 a share. And you keep all $1,000 if you wrote five of them. I hope that makes sense to you guys. We are doing this. That's what the class was all about on Saturday and much, much more. If you want to check it out, check out the class and uh, you'll learn all about this. I did this with GameStop, IBM, Apple. I did this with a bunch of examples. You can check it out. All right, there you go. Uh, let's go. Okay, got my first shot. Go Moderna, work your magic. Right on, man. Way to go. Way to go. ATIP had unusual options activity four hours ago. Very interesting. 439 on ATIP. Um, we're at 15.07 on SoFi, still down 66 cents. 149.15 on GameStop, down 8.50. The Dow is up uh, 267 right at this point. Uncle Brees, Uncle B, what do you know about SPAC redemptions? I'm reading that Matterport had a very low redemption rate, uh, but the CYX had a 65% redemption rate last month. ME at 32, ATIP 26. Um, I'm not 100% sure on what this actually meant. Um, uh, I, I have to dig into this a little further. I'm going to guess, I'm going to take a wild guess that um, uh, these were the $10 shares that investors could give back and, and not buy after all. Like if you had the stock at $9.98 on the day they had the shareholder vote and you decided to just not vote for the merger, you decided to just get your, your $10 back because you don't want to be in the deal anymore. Maybe that's what happened to these issues here. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm guessing that could be it. Hey, Bruce, when is this channel's anniversary? You passed it already. We're already past it. Uh, that was back in May. Yeah, it's already it's been over a year now. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> what exactly does CYXT do? They own server farms. You know those giant buildings in these light industrial areas? I don't know if you've ever seen any of these buildings. They have no windows. They're surrounded by barbed wire, high barbed wire fence, dogs sometimes, certainly patrols. Uh, it's a highly secured building. Um, the building is full of computer servers and full of technicians handling and running them. And the only way in and out of these buildings usually is through a um, secure facility, a secure location where you have to have ID to be able to get in and out. <clears throat> um, even to make a delivery to a building like this, uh, the delivery guy can only get to the door. He has to buzz. They have to, They ask, what do you want? <laughs> uh, they'll be security guard asking, what do you need? <clears throat> you'll be on camera. You'll be, you'll be showing your ID that you're a delivery guy. You'll have a package. You might be delivering a part for a server. They'll buzz you in, <clears throat> but you'll only get into an ante room, into a, into a little loading area. And then uh, you tell them who you're here for, and you, you show them the package, and they, they can see who you're tr delivering to. They, they contact that tech in that building. They contact the, relevant, the rel relevant technician. A technician will come out and will take a look at the package and go, oh, yeah, yeah, we need this. Sign for it, and off they go. And the delivery guy walks out the door. He's only in 10 feet in the building. And the tech <clears throat> goes through multiple doors. Uh, of security to get back into the server farm room and then they can go to uh, open the package and take the part and install it in whatever server they need. These are highly, highly complicated, very expensive, need to, uh, constant monitoring, uh, climate control systems like you can't believe, backup generators everywhere to keep everything running, never shuts down. <clears throat> and uh, some of these server farms uh, will have servers only for one company or a government for example. Uh, but other server farms are like with, with the six, six Terra, uh, their server farms are huge with lots of servers in it, but they don't service one customer inside the server farm. They serve hundreds of customers. They have 23 or 2,700 customers they deal with worldwide. Many, many companies and governments around the world. And so uh, uh, these are constantly maintained to store the data, transfer data uh, back and forth. So every time you use your Costco card, you use your Costco card or you use your grocery store card and you're grabbing points or you use your credit card or your debit card, you might have a debit card or a credit card that is linked to a number of pro promos like cashback promos, airline points, vacation, whatever it is. That's what these server farms are tracking. They're tracking all the activity inside the grocery store. So when you buy a box of 
box of uh, cookies and you scan out at the till, the till scans your cookie purchase. That automatically adjusts inventory levels throughout the entire system. Um, the, the way you pay for it is scanned through another system. That is scanning the money and the points and all the benefits. And this, this data is going globally, going global. It's going up into outer space, coming back down. It's unbelievable. And so the cookie company knows that, uh, oh, at uh, 7.02 p.m. at location such and such, another box of chocolate chip cookies sold out of that shelf. That means that that shelf now is down to six boxes of cookies. We got to send those guys six more cookies. So when the, the next delivery is made a day later, that truck driver has in his truck miraculously six cookies in a box that go into that shelf because yesterday you triggered the buy order for six more. It's that, it is that finite, that, that isolated. And this is happening nanosecond by nanosecond globally around the world. And so Sextera is tracking all of this. It is absolutely incredible. Now the cookie company that makes the cookies, <clears throat> they need to produce so many cookies a day, so many cartons and boxes and have you. <clears throat> they also are being informed through their servers you sold yesterday 55,000 boxes of cookies all around the world or all over North America or in Texas or wherever you're dealing with. And now you need to make this many more cookies and this kind of cookie. This You make 15 different kinds of cookies and you've got your orders, how many you need to make every day. You also then need to order in the packaging for the cookies because you don't make the packaging, you make the cookies. So now you're ordering packaging for the cookies that you need to make. This is all happening because you bought a box of cookies. You cookie eater, you. Uh, Sextera keeps track of all that data, all that data. So that the data between you and your, your debit card, credit card, the cookie, the grocery store, the cookie company, the company that makes the packaging, the company that makes the packaging that orders the paper and the cardboard in raw form to print it, on and on and on it goes. The marketing department of the cookie company, the, the advertising agency of the cookie company, they're monitoring sales. How are sales going? All data, 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 data. Sextera, growing leaps and bounds, now a public company. They're the second or third largest server farm company listed on the markets. They're the, one of the top three now in the world as a publicly traded server farm company. They're going to expand now. They're going to acquire and build out more server farms because of the amount of money they raised with this deal. That's what I think is the plan. That's what I think is the plan. 23 me going to get to where I won't get to average down on Friday at this rate this thing oh oh you need you need to go down by then it's 876 it's up 53 cents it's uh, coming on again yep uh, 1.9 million shares we got 18 minutes left to go in the day unbelievable um let's see uh yeah 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 here on GE I saw that they sell your shares if your position would go into fractional so you, you'll get some money you'll get some money left over some change will come your way I guess Fred be good luck I only have 26,000 uh, is now 20,000 can't buy no more I, I my retired friends have advisors I only have Bruce I think I, I think it'll work out there you go uh, right on, great explanation. What do you think about is happening to SoFi right now? It just fades every day. What do you think is happening to SoFi? SoFi, what's happening to SoFi? SoFi, what's happening? What's happening with SoFi? What's happening? It's 1509. There are more sellers and buyers today. It was up this morning. It is down now. It has stayed down now. That's where it is today. Is the company going to do business? No. Is the company bad? No. Did, some, did the company do something wrong? No. Why is the stock down? More people want it out than want it in. Why? I don't know. Why aren't more people buying it than selling? I don't know. But today, more people are selling than buying, and it's down 64 cents. Could it go lower tomorrow? Yes. Could it go higher tomorrow? Yes. Could it change like at nothing? Could it do nothing tomorrow? Yes. It could do all the things. Could there be a great day tomorrow? Yes. Could it be the greatest day of all time tomorrow? Yes. Why? I don't know. But maybe the company might say something. Or maybe an analyst will say something. Maybe in a stock analyst will do a write-up on SoFi and go, this stuff's too cheap. Uh, maybe someone will, will write something and say, I was watching this guy on the internet called Uncle Bruce talking about this SoFi. And I looked into it after he talked about it. I think it's the greatest thing I've ever seen since sliced bread. Or some analyst will say, you know what? If, if SoFi, uh, if Robinhood can go up 8.83 a share and they're guaranteed to lose you money over the next year, they're going to lose money for the next year. Guaranteed. But SoFi is making money already and growing. Why don't people buy the SoFi instead of the Robinhood? 
Maybe an analyst will write a story about that, comparing one to the other, and will come up with a conclusion saying, your money would be smarter in SoFi than in Robinhood, especially at $46.50 a share for a company that went public at $38. But I can't make that happen. I can only say it here to you who are here live with me, and you have to pass it on. So help me out. Pass the story on. SoFi is a deal, is steal at $15.04. Joseph, that's all I can do for you today. Just, uh, Cheddar Stacks, do they really think they're going to short so far to the ground? No, it's not happening. Uh, CYXT War, September 11.5, uh, call 34 of them, appeared in my portfolio, but I have no idea where that came from. I've never bought any warrants. Have any idea? Um, you probably have been given these warrants through some kind of deal here on this, uh, on this uh, final uh, amalgamation, I guess. I, I I am I am confused as all get up that you folks are getting these warrants on some of these entities. I really am. I wasn't aware that this was going on, but I'm happy for you because they're worth some money. You can sell them for the cash to help compensate your cost. Uh, goes against your you know cost of the stock. You don't have to do anything with them. You can sell them in the open market uh, anytime you want. Uh, anyway, that's that's all I can tell you. Um, yeah, 23 and me, uh, 868 right now on 2 million shares today. What a day. The Dow up 253 points. All right. ETIP barcoding. Uh, what do you think is happening on SoFi? I just, uh, just did that. I just did. Didn't you just ask me that like five minutes ago, Joseph? Why do you keep asking me the same question all the time? I just talked to you about it. Uh, were you not listening? Uh, would it be funny if SoFi bought out Robinhood eventually? Why bother? Why bother? Why don't you just outcompete them? With you offering all the services that you are, credit cards, car loans, student loans, home loans, mortgages, a credit card promo, promo that SoFi is out servicing and out offering Robinhood's customers for product. Maybe they'll just grind them out. They'll just grow faster than Robinhood will. And maybe in the next three months, Robinhood tops out on customers, starts to lose customers. SoFi steals customers. And then puts Robin Hood out of business. Doesn't have to buy anything. Just watch him go under. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, he, I, I didn't know. Uh, yeah, he said he didn't buy a warrant. I know. He just got one sent to him. Um, hey, I got my average down to 680 on ATIP. Let's go five calls for November lap out loud. There you go. <laughs> Only six there provided warrants, at least to me anyway. Okay, Larry. Is SoFi going to turn around? Seems like it's getting heavily manipulated downward. Heavily manipulated downward? 67 cent price? I don't think so. No, Brian, uh, Brian, you're reading too much into it. You're reading too many conspiracy books, Brian. Stop it. Uh, you're, you're driving yourself crazy. It's not being manipulated lower. It's just trading. This is just the market. <laughs> but, you know, when you're my age, you'll go, oh, he was right. You know, when I watched him 30 years ago, I didn't believe him. But, yeah, he's right. That's This is how the markets work. Well, okay. All right, GameStop down only 480 a share, 152.85. It's going higher. Anybody complaining about the GameStop now? It's going higher. Yay! All right. ATIP 451. Okay, AMC is coming on too. Uh, we're down to 13 minutes to go, and the stocks are coming up. Some of our stocks are going up. Unbelievable. I don't know. Um, sorry, Bruce. There's a delay. It's okay, Joseph. You're all good. You're good, man. You're... Damn it, Joseph says GB man. <laughs> How can I make money with these warrants? How can I make money? Uh, you can't make money. I mean, you can buy them low and sell them high, so you're like playing the stock. I just say sell them, take the money, and uh, put it against your account and buy more stock and more options. Hey, Uncle Bruce, I had you on mute. What's happening with SoFi? <laughs> so I was on mute too. Anyway, so there you go. GameStop's making a move, says Fenville. Yes, it is. And I think somebody I know has, has an option on it or two or somebody... Doesn't somebody I know have some call options on this on this stuff? I, I know I know I know this gal Fenville. I think this Fenville person has some options on this. Uh, one's fifty four thirty. She got some call options. I think so. I think so. Uh, yeah, we're down three thirty five at one fifty five forty five. Just jumped again. Uh, GameStop is running. Why is it running? What did you say, uh, Fenville? Did you say something? Did you make a? Did you make a? Uh, some kind of a comment on some television show, Fenville? What's going on here? Why is your GameStop popping all of a sudden? What did you do? Uh, One fifty-five seventy-eight up, down a buck eighty-seven. What's happening with the GameStop? Something's going on. Something. Something. I don't know what. I. I, I don't. I don't have the. I don't have the goods. Um, let's see. 
I don't have any news announcements that just came out. I don't I don't see any news, but something's going on with uh, GameStop. So, something one fifty four seventy eight only down two eighty seven. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, Mirko was saying that if you had shares, uh, shares of twenty twenty what was this? Uh, I guess probably thirty four dollars per share. Uh, yeah. Anybody who had shares of SVAC on uh, on the twenty ninth of July twenty twenty one, I guess is that right? Would now get three point three four warrants of of of, of uh, stock on sex six terra interesting uh, anyway vac at 10 i smell a bargoon uh you know what bruce get yourself some cookies tomorrow it seems like bagels ain't it um <laughs> gamestop moving a bit it's jumping 155.80 down a dollar 85 on your gamestop uh amc still down a dollar 27 it's moving too but um it's still off a dollar 33 uh it's only come up about a dollar from its low of the day but yeah, uh, GameStop has definitely moved up. Low of the day, 148, now 155.70, down $1.13 on GameStop. Something's moving that stock. If anyone wrote puts today on GameStop, you would be very happy now. Uh, yes, you would. You would if you wrote puts today. Yes. Uh, yes, I have $157 calls and $160 calls for this week, and you're almost in the money on your 157th. 156.79 down 86 cents coming on big time. How about that? Um, anyway, uh, Bruce, I just stole second base right on. Um, it's been so long since I've seen a candle. I don't know what to do with myself. Uh, I'm just checking. Are we rich yet? Oh, tomorrow, huh? Oh, okay. Uh <laughs> There's a long attack on GameStop. That's what it is. It's a long attack. 156.49 down a dollar 16 <clears throat> on GameStop. <laughs> Thanks for the ATIP buy the dip advice, Uncle Bruce. This is paying off this week. It's paying off. 451 on ATIP up 76 cents today. Thank you very much. 76 cents gain. We are at the uh, just short of the high of the day on 9.1 million shares of ATIP. There's buying coming in here. There is buying. There's money coming in on ATIP. Okay, um, let's see uh, what else is going on. Um, yeah, um, that's right. So you're saying, Bruce, that uh, CYXT were around a few decades ago. They could have been tracked. They could have tracked the old lady who swallowed the fly and everything that followed after that. Yes, that is correct. They could have followed it all. That is right. Let's go, baby, says Fanville. Now you're talking, Fanville. You're, you're, you're here. You're here. <laughs> oh, my. <clears throat> uh, stop encouraging GameStop today. Bagels tomorrow, please, says Carver. <laughs> Carver wrote the, wrote the covered foot today, the 120 covered foot. <laughs> he wrote the wrong one. Don't, don't encourage it. Oh, Lordy, 156.51. Oh, no. It's now worth $36 a contract. Uh oh, uh, it's gone up, but it, it can go down. But it's up. Uh, I don't know. AMC and, and GameStop both popping at the same time. Uh, AMC still down a dollar thirty-one. It's not popping like GameStop is. Uh, SoFi fifteen oh two, not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> Matterport at fifteen dollars. Uh, Twenty-three me eight sixty-seven up forty-four cents. Two point one million volume. Uh, wow, what a day! IBM up two fifty-eight to one forty-four. Um, and the Dow up 255 points. We got seven minutes to go here. What is going on? Uh, Papa Cohen and Uncle Deep Front is a self value are making stonk go up. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, <clears throat> let's see. Um, yes, uh, I, I agree. Uh, the, these, these warrants are like a contract, like an options contract. You can hold them if you want, they're, they're not, they don't cost you anything. Uh, you don't have to do anything with them. Totally up to you. Uh, Israel, Uncle Bruce, I appreciate the knowledge you share, even though you do censor our speech from time to time. I, hey, I, I do what I can. I, I'm just trying. I'm doing what I can. Uh, anyway, 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 let's see what's going on. Um, ATIP is a poppin', they say. Um, <laughs> um, make like Indiana Jones. Get in the fridge. Uh, GameStop is going nuclear, I wish. Uh, 157.15. GameStop is down 50 cents a share. 157.23 down 42 cents a share. It's now down 35 cents a share. 157.30. GameStop is about to go positive with five minutes to go in the day. GameStop might go green. Can you believe it? 
Unbelievable. It might. It might. I'm not saying it will, but it might go green. Go, 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 says Mother Pompey. Um, crazy to think that you bought ATIP this morning. You'd be up 20% right now. It's 454 up 79 cents. Uh, GameStop still down 61 cents. Wow. That got me laughing out loud. Uh, what the? Why the face just happened to GameStop? What, what the face is going on with GameStop here? It's more buyers and sellers. It's the opposite of SoFi. See, I have one viewer who's curious about SoFi. There's more sellers than buyers. On GameStop, there's more buyers than sellers at the end of the day. And so that's why it's this close to breaking even. 156.82, or now 156.94, down 71 cents. Come on, GameStop. I would have gotten away with it too if it hadn't been for Uncle Bruce. Okay, Uncle Bruce, there's uh, one question around in my head for weeks now. Will you whisper again once it hits 200? <laughs> It's gone positive. GameStop is green. 158. It touched it. It did it. It went green for a moment. It did it. I, I saw it. You're not fooling me. 158.65. It touched it. It went green for a moment. 157.20. 157.70. We're jumping around here, right around it. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, 263 on the Dow. That's a high of the day. And GameStop is up a nickel. It's up 11, 157.76. GameStop is green. Uh, AMC down $1.34 is not green. <clears throat> Wowee, uh, what can I say? All we need now is SoFi to go up, uh, Matterport to go up, and then you guys will leave me alone. <laughs> you won't pick on me so much. How about that? Uh, oh, man. I don't know what to do. HIP money, Cardano, Car Cardano money, EA only attendees, but... ITM in I don't know what to move I don't know what to do. GameStop was scaring me a minute ago. Laugh out loud. Uh, where are we at? One fifty seven forty nine down sixteen cents. I'm excited for tomorrow. Holy shit! I wrote deep in the money calls on GameStop yesterday. Oh well. Um, <laughs> Fanville, thank you Fanville for this donation. Uh, you're making money now. I'm very happy for you. I want you making lots and lots and lots of money. Uh, this is good stuff. 157.54, 156 something. What are we doing? 156.81 on GameStop. We have three odd minutes to go. Uh, still down 70 cents, but still uh, 157.28 down 37 cents. I'll take that. Did someone say deep fried value? I just sold my 160 call for a profit. Sharing is caring. Oh, Fanville, you're awesome. And way to go, girl. Way to make some money today. I think Ryan Cohen is holding up with Jack Mine, an undisclosed location. Uh, GameStop likely heading up now that they are moving to S&P tomorrow. Sell pressure done now. Buying pressure. Ha ha. GME just popped. I did buy ATIB this morning for a 20% gain. I'm laughing. Uncle Bruce, AB, I bought ATIB this morning. Uh, green, uh, we've got green hearts. Uh, everyone's happy. We're hitting green. Uh, you ever come up, you ever thought of coming up with a tie dye t shirt? Uh, I have thought of all kinds of things. Um, people are happy. Uh, GameStop, wow, oh dang, it's green. Love this stock. Green, it's green. Well, you know, it was. It's up 47 cents here. Uh, volume four million. Here's your day's chart on, on uh, GameStop. There's your chart for the day. There it goes right at the end. There's up to the moon, baby. That's looking a lot better for those of you who are long and who wrote put contracts. You're doing rather nicely today. Oh, our rich Uncle Bruce. <laughs> Green is good. SoFi is only going to go up when I sell. That's that's it. Uh, 1508 right now. Oh, boy. 176, 276 gain on the Dow with a minute and a bit to go in the day here. We're coming into the end of the day. We've got, we've got a good one going here. Uh, GameStop just did, did an unbelievable run here. How about that? And uh, Zach, you got it. Larry, you got it. Uh, Z uh, Josh has got it. Uh, uh, DQ got it. Yes. Uh, what can I say? Um, good stuff. Uh, <laughs> sure. So I, I waited all day, and about an hour ago, I wrote a covered call on GameStop at a hundred sixty dollars strike. Laugh out loud. You're welcome, people. Well, you got the you got the you got the premium, and you still. Or in the money. I mean, you're okay. Uh, Mirko, this is, uh, this is totally a normal behavior for a stock. Um, you can be a billionaire by now unless you're an undercover billionaire already. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, anyway, uh, GameStop ready to close. They're jerks. Well, it's 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 still down 123, but had a good run. Now now down $4. Uh, now 152, 152 down $5. It's going back down again. So you wrote that 160 call. You're doing great now. Uh, you're okay. Nee. Uh, GameStop, big flight going on. Big fight going on is right. 152 now down 560. I don't know what to make of it. 
Uh, I'm just here watching this thing go. Zzz, 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 woo, uh, the GameStop's acting normal again. <laughs> oh no, back to 151. She says, "Oh no, what you sold your call? Uh, you did all right there. Uh, now it's terrible. Laugh out loud that crash. Uh, 152. Now it's great. <laughs> We're back to normal. Uh, what just happened? We're back to normal. Uh, this is this is absolutely normal." Just went off the cliff here. Looks like a reverse ladder attack. Oh, gosh. We're down to a minute to go in the day. Uh, my GameStop just charged. It went, went left here. Just went out the, went out the window. Um, uh, uh, Charles, uh, you're back. You're back, Charles. Uh, you're only 31 in the money now. Uh, don't worry. It's coming back to you. Oh, my. What the hell is this? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know. It's a bizarro world today. Uh, I don't know what to say. 153.03 now on GameStop as we are jumping around uh, just crazy. 152.06. Uh, on GameStop, I, I don't know what to make of this. Uh, 150, 152, uh, 152. I don't know. I don't know what it's doing. It's 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 over. We're closed. We're done. We're done for the day. Uh, we're all done for the day. Close at 152.75, down 490, and uh, we're on the aftermarket. 152.99, up 26 cents. So the market's closed. Uh, trying to figure what happened here. It is it is wild. It is wacky, and uh, just another day in paradise. Uh, what can I say, Larry? That the bells have gone. The GameStop forkery continues. Feel like a millionaire now after sold that so under sixty dollar call. The way to go, Fenville. Why the face GameStop? What's the deal? Love me some GameStop. I'm showing one for two twelve. Uh, yeah, well, I, I it's all over the place. Uh, uh, I, I, Island Girl keeps wondering why would you buy stock as opposed to bonds uh, or bonds as, in, as opposed to stock. Um, it all depends on what kind of an investor you are. Uh, if you're handling pension funds. For uh, you know, tens of thousands of former employees and tens of thousands of current employees, and you're bringing, you're getting in pension contributions every month into the pension plan. You've got to keep money working, and uh, you have to have enough money to pay pensions of those who've retired, and you have to have enough capital in the future for the pensions of those who are still working. So you've got to build this pension fund, and the the structure here, the game plan is to. Uh, is to uh, bring in income. Now, uh, certain pension funds have certain rules and regulations and guidelines. You cannot get into stock. You can't buy stock. You can only buy bonds. You can only buy very conservative government bonds, triple B rated or higher, or, or, or double A rated or higher, or A rated or higher. It all depends. And so that limits you to certain bonds of certain governments and certain corporations, perhaps, and that's it. On the other hand, other pension funds are <clears throat> very large, but they'll have like a maybe a ten percent rule, and uh, no more than ten percent of the fund can be in any one can be in can be in any stocks, and of the stocks, no one stock can be more than two percent of the ten percent. So that means diversification, um, and the companies that that you can invest in must be a S and P five hundred, or they must be a Dow Jones thirty and an S and P five hundred, or, or or some kind of combination. Um, there's rules like that, and then there are pension funds. The same pension fund might have a rule that says 30% of our money is in bonds, corporate bonds, and 50% of the money is in government bonds, triple A rated or double A rated or A rated. These pension funds are very structured, and so that's why there are some bond investors and others are stock investors, and then there's everything in between. Anyway, there you go. Uh, what can I say? Uh, Uncle Bruce, someone just dropped, dropped off some powder, and I'm feeling like Home Alone too. Um, and here we go. I think you should do some live trading, Uncle Bruce, and we can follow what you do to make some money together. No, I didn't have GameStop volume just pumped, jumped 6.7 million, total of 13 million GameStop volume. Is that true? I didn't, I didn't know that. Let me see that. GameStop volume, I'm showing 4.6 million all day. That's all I'm showing. Don't know where you're getting that from. Uh, hey, Bruce, Schwab and Ga said GameStop had an order imbalance at 350 of 2.19 million on the buy side. Is this related to the S&P 400 uplifting tomorrow? Love you, buddy. It could have well been. That could well have been exactly what happened. And uh, uh, our friend here, our our lovely lady who scored this uh, contract deal, uh, she uh, she was able to sell her call contract, uh, Fenville. She was able to sell her contract in the run as it ran. She sold her call that she bought this morning and uh, scored a nice little deal. Beautiful, beautiful. That could well have happened this afternoon. That could well have been it. Yeah, and then after that was done, the stock eased off again, but now we're here, and it's now part of the S&P 400 mid-cap index. 
and life goes on from here. And this tells me that a lot of pension funds, maybe a bunch of mutual funds and some ETFs this afternoon, were buying GameStop to align their uh, portfolios into the stock as this is going on. And it is possible, and I'm only saying maybe possible, that all day long uh, funds that held stock in the S&P 600 Junior Index were selling GameStop all day today because they had to get out by the end of the day. So they were sellers driving the stock down for no reason, but it did. And then here we had the buyers at the end come in for their buy allocation, and it all equaled out, but we still lost 490 on the day. So that could have been it, uh, you know. Wow, uh, isn't that fun? Uh, yeah, you know, what can I tell you? Um, manipulation in its finest. Meanwhile, Gary Gensler looks the other way. All right. <laughs> GameStop dropped six bucks in 10 seconds. Uh, when that buying stopped, it stopped. <laughs> oh, man, it stopped dead in its tracks. I don't know. We'll see what happens tomorrow now. I'll uh, see how the stock wants to behave tomorrow going on. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, 10 million shares in the last 10 minutes. Um, holy shnikes. Uh, Robinhood shows 13.2 million volume on GameStop now. So maybe maybe my my uh, my thing here is late. I don't know. I I don't I don't have an updated volume that I can see. Um, I'm not seeing the volume that uh, that uh, you're showing. But hey, maybe it'll be adjusted later. It's all to come. We'll see. Okay. Uh, Nine million more shares. There's multiple orders of 100,000 plus GameStop shares coming through right now. Thanks, Uncle B. The more I learn, the more I learn, more the realize I realize what I don't know. Um, Vanville GameStop, well done. Um, Associates, Uncle B, how is a how is a SPAC like VACQ at these levels now? How is a SPAC, what is the thinking from investors this close to being listed? Uh, VACQ, well, you know, Vector, uh, Rocket Lab, it's August 20 still, so time to uh, wait it out. Don't know. Uh, we'll see what's going on. Enjoyed session two video. You got your legs under yourself from session one. Keep up the good work. Oh, you like those classes, those lessons? Thank you, thank you. Um, show, we're showing 14 million on GameStop. Someone is saying, someone's saying 14 million. I'm showing, well, I'm showing aftermarket of 2.3 million right now. So I, that's what I'm showing right now. That's pretty cool. Um, very interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's happening, Carver? Uh, there we go. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is unbelievable. Um, <laughs> Oh, man, Carver's having a hell of a day today. He's having a hell of a day today. Unbelievable. Um, okay. So far, 15.14, up four cents in the aftermarket. And um, ATIP, uh, 4.33 in the aftermarket, down 16 cents. Go figure that one. Um, <laughs> Matterport, uh, not changing in the aftermarket, still $15. 23 and me close at 868, up 45 cents today. Um, trading at 876, up 8 cents in the aftermarket. Fantastic. All right. All right. Anyway, there you go. Uh, SMH set another record high today. That is awesome. SMH. Let's take a look here. Yeah, 267 is the last trade. Um, that is the 52-week high. Uh, that is right up there. Yep, yeah, it's right up there. I know that uh, a little while ago, I was, I was begging you guys to buy this when it was as low as what was it, 245? It had, it had cratered out in, in June, but, uh, yeah, it's now doing great. IBM up uh, 261 on the day, 144.03. Wow. There you go. Thank you, uh, DQ. I'm still holding two contracts at 157.50 for the week, so let's see what happens tomorrow. Um, let's see. Volume from GameStop, uh, totally 4.67. Could someone correct me if I'm wrong? I I'm showing 3.95 day volume over here on my, on my uh, market watch. I'm showing... On my Yahoo, day volume of 4.6 million. I'm showing after hours volume of 3.1 million at 152.25 now on GameStop. So uh, I, I've got all kinds of numbers. And then I got my viewers here with their own apps with all kinds of numbers as well. So it's goofy. It's crazy. It's kooky. It's fun. Uh, what can I say? That rush must have been another 9 million. A GME, baby. Um, let's see. Is this related to the uh, 600 buy? Buy in, then why did AMC follow the same chart? I don't, I don't know. Uh, someone's saying, yeah, 13 plus million. Uh, live public chat, no members, no more. Any more, uh, Wagon. Uh, hold, baby. Uh, 
Fidelity showing uh, 13.5 million shares traded on GameStop. <clears throat> Bruce, you have any opinion on Rocket Mortgage? I don't. I don't. I, I watched it about three months ago. It had a real stupid run one day. And then it back, gave it all back, and, and I, I just I don't watch it. Um, Uncle Bruce, what is the highest amount of monies you made for one of your clients back in the day? Oh, gosh. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember. I know I did. I had one trade where um, I bought about um, I bought about forty thousand dollars worth of stock in a block, and um, that block turned into about a half a million. That was one of those real leverage trades. That that was a good one. But that that's those are one offs. Look at the game ch stop chart. Twenty of the final twenty five minutes were all buyers. Then one big seller. Uh, it's so weird. Uh, Fenville GameStop. It's so weird. Weeble shows four point six seven. Uh, TD TD shows thirteen point six million. So Kevin Lane says, "Yep, a great expect explanation on CYZX, uh, CYZZ, uh, whatever that was." Thank you. Uh, my name is Jonas. Uh, thirteen point six million on IB, international brokers uh, or IB, IB interactive brokers. Okay. Uh, Robinhood finally processed the orders from January. <laughs> <laughs> My Merrill Lynch app shows 13.6 million. There you go. So you guys are showing uh, numbers that I don't show, uh, but that's cool. It's all it's all good. Um, whatever it is, it is. And whatever it's showing, it's showing. Um, uh, let's go. Um, I have noticed that the support on SoFi each time it bleeds has increased. Today it bounced off the 15 mark. Last time it was 1472. Interesting. Um, Triple G says, so I picked up 180 more ATIP shares over the last few days. And I averaged down to 402. Whoa, first stock I've owned 100 shares on. And now you're up. You're up on the stock. How about that? 450 final trade on ATIP. Up 75 cents today. Very close to its high of the day. And uh, and uh, nine point five million volume. That is significant. It is coming along. Um, let's see. Squeeze happening. That run up to five hundred could be a thing if the volume keeps going like that daily. Says AB. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Go GameStop. Says Daniel. Yeah. Uh, hi Uncle Bruce. Great explanation on the. Uh, on the six terra the six terra um hope you'll make a longer explanation on spire global as well soon thank you uh ab volume was due to the move to the s p mid cap uh volume will move accordingly as per gamestop announcements which i hope happens soon i'm kind of wondering now that they are part of the mid cap they will begin to talk again uh they'll begin to make announcements because now you're talking to uh ET etfs mutual funds and pension funds that own gamestop that follow the uh, that follow the, all these index funds that follow the mid cap market. Yeah, so we're talking to higher end institutional clientele. Interesting. Uh, we'll see. Um, anyway, there you go. Mm, 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 mm. Uncle Bruce, I want to buy more Matterport. Do you think it'll go lower? I hope not. I hope it doesn't go lower. Uh, I don't hope it to go any lower whatsoever. I want it to go straight up. So get it. I like it down here. I just like it a lot. Um, let's see. Uh, yep, three quarters of trading happened in the last 15 minutes of the day. Yeah, that's right. Um, let's see. Um, what else have we got? A uh, lot of lot of stock changed hands here. Um, six and a half million shares of GameStop in one order exchanged hands at 4 p.m. sharp today. That is a billion dollar order of stock. <laughs> that's, that's serious money. Ah, that's serious cash, kids. Uh, you got to love this game. Uh, uh, Uncle Bruce, a friend is also a YouTuber, and he wants to show, like you do, the comments he's replying on the screen. How do you do that? Are you using a software for that? Yeah, I'm using uh, StreamYard. I'm using StreamYard to do my telecasts here, and that allows me to pop these questions onto here live. Um, it also allows me to show off uh, pictures of myself and uh, Jennifer uh, when we go out like this. And uh, or like like this right here when we go out, you know, uh, and then sometimes you know she 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 makes me go out. We go out on a grocery run from time to time. You know, she'll make me. Uh, <laughs> she'll make me. Uh, 
uh, she'll make me uh, get all dressed up with a you know with a suit and tie, and uh, she you know she she wants me all dressed up, but she she likes to wear something cool for that hot hot weather we're having right now. You know when it gets up to almost 100 degrees, so she kind of likes to wear something that allows a little more airflow through through so that she doesn't overheat. But she makes me wear that darn tie, man. Uh, that's that's what she does. So yeah, that's how this game works anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what can I say? Um, it, it is what it is. Uh, fantastic. Uh, yeah. So yeah, streamer is what I use. Okay. All right. Uh, wow. For the seventies. Uh, I don't know what this means. Um, what else is going on here? Uh, seeing. Uh, yeah, so I saw six point six million show, sold at thirteen ten. Uh, something's brewing on GameStop. Well, it moved index indexes. It's no longer in the S and P five hundred small cap. It's in the S and P four hundred mid cap. So that looked like what happened tonight. Uh, anyway. Hmm. Uh, let's see. What do I do? Hi, Uncle Bruce. Uh, I used the last money, the last of my dough to buy more GameStop on the dip, but the covered calls I wrote for January 22, GameStop 300, 400 are 28% lower and I need cash to buy back. What do you think? You, you don't want to buy them back. Uh, just just leave them. Just just leave them for now. You're fine. Just just, just leave. Them. You're okay. Just, just leave them. Um, and and if GameStop, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it GameStop goes higher, that's great. Uh, but uh, right now they got to go a long, long way to to push you around on these three and four hundred. So just sit tight, do nothing, uh, let time be your friend, and let's just see how the shares do the next couple of days. Because um, this was a, a end of the day maneuver. We'll see what's going on. Oh, what? Why the face is up with wine? What? What the face is up with the wine? Like I say, it was just uh, it was mutual funds and ETFs and index funds making their moves. That's what it was, I guess. Computer trading did all that. Anyway, there you go. Um, any uh, uh, Bruce, I honestly don't think you should recommend any options to these newbies. Uh, most who bought SoFi at 18-ish will lose money, even if it's 23, due to the volatility. Just hold stock people forever. Ha ha. Well, you know, uh, everyone has their uh, way, and anyone, it's a free country, and you do what you want, and uh, I beg to differ. Uh, a triple G uh, run-up is because S&P mid-cap is GameStop is added before tomorrow morning. There you go. There you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, uh, Fendel says, in Fidelity, it shows someone sold 9,300 shares at 157.35 at 355, 26 uh, at 76 p.m., then 6,100 shares at 157.64 at 1556, and then 12,900 at 153 at 1559. Wacky. Just, just wacky. Um, uh, Bruce, I bought, uh, dear Bruce, I bought 32 call contracts of 23 and Me. Uh, at ten dollar expiration price, uh, exp uh, expiry. Okay, uh, exercise price, not expiration. Uh, expiring Jan twenty one twenty two. What do you think? I've been watching for six months religiously. First time ever saying anything. Laugh out loud. Thank you. Uh, just sit tight. Just uh, just sit tight and let uh, twenty three and Me uh, uh, do what they're doing. Uh, what they have to do. Um, today we're up forty five cents to eight sixty eight. So we're creeping closer and closer to that ten dollar exercise price. Little by little, um, and uh, we just kind of, you know, just sit tight. Where it's eight seventy six in the aftermarket, we're up again. Yep, your Tesla is ringing, Uncle Bruce. Maybe, maybe it came in. Maybe my Tesla finally arrived. Wait a minute, I didn't order a Tesla. Uh, okay, so uh, it couldn't be it. Um, you know, she must be like four foot one inches. No, I'm wearing those stilts. You know those, you know those stilts that the ceiling guys wear when they do the stipple work on your ceiling, and those electricians that change light bulbs in public spaces. They wear those. They wear those aluminum things that's what i got on in that photo yeah jen jen she's got the legs yeah oh yeah she's whew, she's hot stuff man what can uh, bruce is lucky to have such a beautiful wife exactly exactly uh, and mrs bruce is lucky to have a mr bruce I, exactly uh, that's what uh, i keep saying that but no one else really says it except you richie uh, other than you uh beach boy don't do anything wait for gamestop to pop around 300 and then roll them to get more money exactly uh let the stock let the stock go up and if the shares go to this 250 level, you'll you'll sell out, you'll buy back your 300s, and you'll write 500s, and and you'll write further money, and you'll make even more money. You'll just keep rolling more. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do anything right now. Stock markets with Bruce. I have the 20 dollar call on SoFi, the uh, expiry on uh, October 15th with an average of 164. Should I be worried? Uh, well, SoFi can go up five dollars in one day at any time. Uh, they get that bank charter of theirs, and watch out. Uh, they're well on their way to $20, $25 a share. 
you're going to make all kinds of money. So stick around. Hey, Uncle Bruce, uh, got 20 more GameStop today. Oh, beautiful job. Uh, wacky. Uh, I got a C CYXT, a, a price of 17. CYXT, I don't know what that is. Is that the CY? I'm not sure what you're paying for. Uh, Matterport appoints head of products to scale global platform from Matterport Inc. They've just made an announcement. Okay. Um, don't know if that's going to help the stock or not, but uh, we love announcements. Uh, oh, at $1.75, you mean. Uh, so you got something CYXT. So you got the warrants. You have warrants that are worth $1.75. That's what you've got. You were given, given for free, warrants which now have a value of 175 each. So if you have 300 shares of stock, you now have 100 warrants. It's a, it's a one-third thing, as far as I understand. Uh, sadly, I only had four shares. So what do you got now? One something warrant? Yeah, anyway, there you go. Can GameStop uh, uh, being moved to mid-cap potentially be a catalyst for anything more that was to pop the offer? Possibly, but I, I don't know. Also, we celebrate the ATIP to 450. We do, right. So volume on GameStop has suddenly changed. Uh, Uncle Bruce, please confirm. Well, you know, you say it's done it, it's done it. Uh, what, what am I going to do? Confirm what the exchange does? Uh, want me to make a phone call? Uh, what can I do? Dave, he hasn't even upgraded his chair yet. The Tesla's a little bit down the road, you know. <laughs> he's still sitting on some pillows, and he's sitting on phone books. Uh, we send him all this money. He hasn't even upgraded his chair. The guy's going to sell his chair. I mean, he's leaving. He's becoming a nomad. That means he needs the Tesla even more. Because if he gets the Model S and you fold down the back seat in the Model S, you can sleep in the back of a Model S. He could be a nomad with Jennifer on the road. They could be pulling over on truck stops and getting wonderful sleeps in truck stops in the back of a Tesla. See? Well, down. how about that? Uh, any word on why IBM finally woke the face up today? <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, there's some, some, some kind of a, a story about it that they may have... Um, secured some kind of a deal, some kind of a, a cloud computing arrangement deal with, uh, with uh, some organization that's uh, pretty big. And, uh, and uh, I, I, heard, I heard something on, on the Halftime Report today, but I, I didn't really gobble it up too deep, deeply. But, but they are making good deals. They are signing big contracts for their cloud computing work and their AI work. And so they're just growing and they're getting bigger and more profitable. And the street really likes this. So in, IBM is being scooped up by, by a lot of senior investing type people. And I think that's what's going on. More and more buying coming to the stock. We're up today, um, 265 a share. Way to go. 144.07 at the close. You gotta love that. Uh, hit the like button or else there's gonna be Yoko. I don't wear those stilts when I change lights like that. I get a lift so much safer for one like me who's super clumsy. Well, you know, you practice, my friend. It, it, it's all about practice. And uh, with Jen, you know, I got to practice. She's such a tall girl. 259 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. Uh, it's kind of weak on the thumbs ups, but I appreciate it. Uh, 529 of you here. I mean, it's like not even half of you guys who are here have given me a thumbs up. And I'm pretty sure that most of these thumbs up have come from people who were here an hour ago. So you guys who are here are kind of lacking on the thumbs up department. It would be kind of nice if you could show some appreciation for a little, you know, a little thumbs up. So, I mean, just, just help me out. I mean, you know, 350, 400 thumbs ups would be kind of nice. Help the channel a little bit. I mean, you're free. It's not like you have to pay to hand these out, really. I mean, anyone can hand out a thumbs up. Say there's 291 have come in already, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, you know, I mean, help out the guy. I mean, geez, he's sitting here begging you, sitting on pillows. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. Uh, double bottoms at 15, those are usually a good sign. Big bottoms, my girl's got them. Um, let's see. Oh, maybe Jen has options on Tesla. She's just sticking with Uncle B until they get one. Then she's gone following the Steelers to every game. She's going to leave him on the side of the road hitchhiking as she drives off in the Tesla. Yeah, that could be it. You know, uh, that could be it. You know, GameStop's they not a SPAC, y'all. What's that, dear? They figured her out. They figured her out. She, she, she admits it. She admits it. Uh, you know, there you go. You know what, Uncle Bruce? You can't buy a Tesla yet. Okay, but we, I think we donated enough for you to buy a chair from a Tesla car. I mean, you could buy it, you know, you could buy a toy Tesla or something. Um, 
So you're saying that I might get out of these IBM 145 calls ahead. You're saying there's a chance. You're saying there's a chance. Well, you know, 144.35, you're like 65 cents out of the money all of a sudden. Welcome back. Um, just, uh, you know, a couple more bucks from here. You're going to be beginning to smile, I think. Uh, let's see. Bruce is going to get the prototype new Tesla SW station wagon to cart his streaming setup around Canada for a few years. There you go. Maybe, I, maybe I'm waiting for the Tesla minivan. Maybe that's what I'm waiting for. The Tesla, the shaggin wagon. Maybe that's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> you, maybe you could smear the grape jelly while on the way to Palm Desert. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, you know, Uncle Bruce, when someone loses a covered call, loses, since we can roll them forever, is there a losing scenario? Thanks for your time and knowledge. If When someone loses on a covered call, someone is losing on a covered call, since we can roll them forever, uh, is there a closing scenario? Oh, I see. So. You wrote a covered call at say five bucks. The stock went up and the covered call is now eight bucks. You buy that call back and immediately write another covered call further out, maybe at a higher strike price for maybe nine bucks. So you bring in an extra dollar. Stock goes up and that contract is now worth $12. So you buy it back and write another call contract down the road further length of time at another strike price for like 13 bucks. Can you just inevitably just keep doing this? Well, you could, but what you're doing in reality is you're lifting the call price, the exercise price, every rollover, right? So if your first rollover was at $100 and the second rollover was at 110 and the third rollover, rollover is at 120, even if you get exercised, you get exercised at 120 plus the premium you got on that last contract, you're up on your overall deal because uh, you probably bought the stock at 90, 95, or 100 when you first started writing the contract. So you could play that game. Yes, of course. A thumbs up. I got your backwards. Thank you, JR. Uh, JR. Ah, uh, the whiteboard and the green screen. Um, it's 14 million volume. Nothing else could explain that shot straight up, it seems. Um, uh, Uncle Bruce, I give, I give you mine automatically. I give you my thumbs ups right away. Well, I thank you so much for that. Uh, all the vaccinated to, to give you thumbs ups. All the folks who got vaccinated, please give Bruce thumbs ups. Okay. Now, all the non vaccinators, Give me thumbs ups now too. Okay, there you go. Uh, DQ says, hey, Jen, I own season, um, uh, Steelers season tickets and I like Teslas. Uh, just saying, Jen, Jen. Uh, DQ is saying, hey, Jen, uh, I own Steelers season tickets oh. and I like Teslas. Just saying, oh, just say it. John Van, I hate IBM. Um, yeah, half of the daily volume in a single one minute candle is crazy, all selling. Uh, let's see. It's cool. I was just smiling when they were way down to, says Michael. Uh, Tom, I understand options, and I don't ask stupid football questions. Yeah, she doesn't ask stupid football questions. No. Do you like them because of the color of the uniform? Uh-oh. Them's are fighting words. Yeah, don't be asking Jen stupid questions about the Steelers. Oh, gosh, no. Um, Anti-PC, going postal. I'm not worried about SoFi or Matterport. We will all be taking rocket rides. There you go. Tesla Airstream, how about that? Kev Lane, DQ, laughing out loud. Uh, Tesla Shaggin Wagon, says Zach. There you go. Kayla, Michael, I have uh, the same calls. Uh, Tesla's moon, but uh, Anti-PC. What about ME? And MS, no clue why it popped right before the, that, though. Um, maybe we were related. Impossible, no, unfortunately. Um, uh, 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 Island Girl says, don't go with Bruce to California, Jen. Don't go with him. Uh, Mark Blue Eyes, so have you seen any market manipulation today? Nothing to see here. Uh, no, no. Explain manipulation. I'm not happy about your ignoring my questions, says Gregory Allen. I, I'm not happy about this. Well, maybe you're asking stupid questions. You know, I mean, it's all right. Um, you can ask me dumb questions. I don't have to read them, though. Bruce, buy a Tesla chair. Uh, my sofa YOLO is hurting. You know, Gregory, I love you. You know, I love you. Uh, Venville, in, 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 man, the key is only roll when the stock is popping. Roll in the red will cost you money. There you go. See, question again there, Gregory. Uh, Venville, Uncle Bruce and DQ is much younger as well. A 300,000 sell-off, says Mark Blue Eyes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks, Venville. Um, <laughs> I'd give you my thumbs up, Bruce, but I just got my first shot and my, uh, my arm is sore. I can't lift it. Um <laughs> Uh, um, I'm a pirate season ticket holder. I guess I have a thing for losers. 
<laughs> oh, Joshua, you poor bugger. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, AB, um, hey, Bruce, so you had an earlier estimate that the fall, which is about to start, uh, you think we'd get in good position to roll our January calls earlier, seeing we're going to wait till November, December. Um, AB, it's the first week of August. This is still the summer. The fall doesn't start till the second week of September. It's got a ways to go. Okay. Israel laughing my, laughing my, you know what, off. Uh, the Steelers are a second rate franchise, says Farmalist. They make the Cleveland Browns look like first rate uh, ROFL. Uh, oh, man. Whew. Farless, uh, I, I am sorry. Uh, what could happen to you if you ever met her? Oh, what could ever happen to you? I, I, I am sorry. Uh, anyway, IBM 143.82 on the aftermarket down a quarter. How is GameStop doing now in the aftermarket? Uh, 152.75 on 3.1 million. There's nothing going on 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 uh, on GameStop at the moment. Just sitting there. Uh, now I'm showing 14.2 million traded on the uh, on the uh, Market Watch app. It's now showing. 14.4 traded on the day. Yeah. 152.75 last trade there. 152.75 last trade on the aftermarket. Uh, Coinkinink? I think not. And so there's uh, that's over 17.5 uh, million. Oh my gosh. 17.5 million volume. That's insanity today. Uh, okay. Um, before uh, you leave, can you tell me what's going on? So I'm oh, sorry, kidding. I couldn't resist. Um, Uh, seriously, how those, how those, uh, the guy wrote the low flat day, writing, writing covered calls, making tons of people happy while there's crying last few minutes. Oh, what are you going to do? All right. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think I picked a bad day to stop amphetamines today. Bad day to stop taking amphetamines. Uh, <laughs> no high expectations put on you at all, Uncle Bruce. There's no high expectations. You just have to be right on every single stock you recommend to us. Every single one has to be up every single day, all the time, or you're a bum. Uh, it's a sad, simple. Uh, other than that, you're fine. Um. <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't know. AB, are there any generic market seasonal uh, fiscal year you think could have an impact on the SPACs, or are the companies so new they're detached from any sort of generic behavior? They're all detached. They're all on their own. Uh, it was me. I found some money in my closet. I swear it was me. I did it. Bruce, I'm known. I'm a known uh, bear poker. Um, I've been doing it for years, and I'm still alive. I think I'm safe though. Laugh a lot, especially since she's not taller than five foot five. <laughs> Bruce, my stocks are down. You're a bum. See, there you go. <laughs> Auntie, don't say that. Going post. I know there's a lots of people like you. Uh, those who don't, their laws. Uh, John. Can someone sum up how GameStop went from poop volume to get ready peeps? <laughs> oh no, Bruce, we need a variety. We need variety tomorrow. Eat cookies instead of boring bagels. How about that? Give us something to chew on. Give us something to think about. Excite us to no end, please. Help us out here. I don't know what to say. Unbelievable. Uh, there you go. Okay. Uh, poof. Oh, gosh. Sorry, folks. Oh, doing a long one here. Just grinding and grinding and grinding a day today. Ah, uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah. Reading the GameStop chart, it says Bruce is a shill. Bruce is brilliant. Bruce is a shill. Bruce might be right. Bruce might be wrong. There you go. <laughs> Carlos, um, the, uh, all the stocks went up because I wrote cover calls today. The market always waits for me to rate right before making up any making any move is canada still under a lockdown um we're i think a lot of travel in our province but we're now being told to wear masks indoors in in public spaces i think yeah uh but alberta is wide open and it's insanity over there it's just insanity over there mm. have you ever had a client who misunderstood something in a comical to a comical amount they thought they went broke but they really went that actually went way up um Oh gosh, uh, I, I've I've had scenarios where uh, you know I've been I've I've had uh, scenarios where like I have a client that has say ten thousand shares of company X, and they were trading at say two fifty the one day, and then the next morning they were down to like a dollar ten, and then by the end of the day they were back to two seventy five, and so I'd say they call me I say how did I do today I was in meetings all day I said oh wow. You were poor and you were rich all in one day. And they go, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, in about an hour this morning, you were down to a dollar ten a share. What? I said, but here's the good news. Oh, what's the good news? Uh, you went all the way back up and you're up to, you're up now 
25 cents a share, you're 25 hundred dollars richer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and he said, I'm glad I wasn't talking to you. It was 110. I would have panicked. I said, well, I wouldn't, I would have told you not to sell it, but uh, yeah, sometimes that, that happens from time to time, but you know, it's the way it goes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, what would really fire up this, uh, it would really fire up this uh, tomorrow, a uh, Yoko at nine forty five Eastern. Uh, there you go. Uh, um, yeah, will you be live streaming tomorrow knowing you have a realtor coming to your house? Well, that'll be after I go off the air. So, uh, you know, we'll be fine. I've saved everything except my, I, I have, I've sold everything except my SoFi and GameStop. I, I should be a millionaire soon. Uh, let's see. Uh, there you go. Anyway, that's, that's it. Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, okay. There you have it. Uh, did you have fun today? What a crazy day today. Uh, up 278 for the Dow. S&P up 36, NASDAQ up 80, um, GameStop closed at, looks like 152.75, I think, although I wonder if it's halted in the aftermarket. I'm not sure what's going on. It hasn't traded, moved, done anything. It's just dead flat right now. Can't figure out what's going on with that one. Um, Matterport, uh, it's dead quiet. Uh, do we have after-hour trading going on on anything? I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, just not seeing much of anything. Anyway, there you have it. Um, the opening bell should be Yoko. Uh, Yoko at 9.29 a.m. Yoko Opano. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll shut this channel down right away, won't we? Um, and we're going to have to check them out. Uh, they should ring Yoko's. They should ring Yoko's bell for making that album. Uh, Yoko Open. Yoko, Yoko Open. Um, Games, GameStop is trading after hours. What are you seeing it trading at right now? What's the last trade on GameStop that you have, folks? Um, I showed at 50, 152.75. No change, which I find impossible because uh, normally they do trade. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, what else is going on? Uh, the, st the stock needs some Viagra. Uh, <laughs> uh, Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's bouncing negative back to flat. Bruce should produce a show open with Yoko playing over it. It plays for 25 seconds before the camera switched to him. I use Yoko as a closing bell. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, just went back to 152.74. Same, 152.75. Uh, yep. Uh, NDPC Mike says, uh, I still wake up in the middle of the night in cold sweats thinking of it. Laugh out loud. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's doing anything right now. Uncle Bruce, maybe Yoko would uh, do a guest appearance. I wonder if she'd do it. Would she charge you for this? Oh, I think so. Um, 152.69 after market. Um, and uh, no change on the after hours market volume. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Alien. Ilian saying, Eddie R., uh, the decision for canceling my membership is because Uncle Bruce is talking too much about the vaccines, and today said that all not vaccinating people are stupid. Well, they are. Anyone is not not doing stupid. That's just, but that's my personal opinion. It's not like, you know, it's not like you are stupid. I just think you are. You're just not getting vaccinated. It's stupid. I think it's dumb. I, I think it's dumb. I just realized I have CYXD warrants as well. 200 shares, 68 warrants. Yay! Uh, there you go. Uh, beautiful. Um, uh, Yoko is a, is a closing... Bell, very good. Um, could ETFs be doing block trades on GameStop after hours to balance their mixes? Yes, they could be. Uh, it's bouncing between 20 and 100 shares up and down, so pretty much flat. Um, and that, that could be. The market might be being held here for a bunch of uh, trades to flatten out the positions. That could be what's going on. Maybe a bunch of uh, ETFs and, and, and other funds are, are uh, uh, arranging their, uh, their uh, portfolio balances on GameStop to try to mirror the S&P 400 mid-cap index, and they need to adjust their GameStop holdings accordingly. And so everyone's adjusting, 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 and that's why there's all this trading at this one price. Uh, that could be what's happening. It could be. I could be wrong, but it could be. He, he doesn't think you're an idiot. He just thinks you're an idiot, you, you know? Um, anyway, they're, and uh, they're stupid because they can pass the virus to vaccinated and they can die. That there's that too. Um, holding all Uncle Bruce back and GameStop it was up a hundred grand and now just breaking even is okay. We'll hold for the long road ahead. Um, anyway, 
I just think it's dumb for a host to insult their paying customer. I, I'm just saying that anyone who doesn't have a vaccine is dumb. Now, if you don't have the vaccine and you feel that I'm insulting you personally, well, that's too bad because I think it's dumb that you don't have the vaccine. That's what I think. I think it's dumb. I, I just think it's dumb. Um, I just think it's dumb. Anyway, there it is. Just my opinion. Uh, I wake up in the middle of the night checking your market. <laughs> uh what can i say i'm just i'm just saying you know we have these opportunities to get these vaccines and save our lives and save other people's lives i think we should take it i, I think we should take the vaccine and help humanity as a whole i i kind of i kind of like being on this planet kind of want to stay here and uh i think others should uh you know help out the planet too and stop thinking of your your own little fears and all that and just go for the greater good that's just me uh but that's you know Mike drop Bruce out. Anyway, there you go. I do both. I've been vaccinated and I'm stupid. I, I'm kind of in that camp myself. Um, personally, I'm here for the insults, says DQ. <laughs> Kayla, Kayla, uh, that's what my doctor said. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It just It's just crazy. Uh, anyway, there you go. Okay. Well, I'm going to pack it up. Uh, now that I've made everybody mad, uh, have a great night. Uh, take care of yourselves. Uh, get vaccinated, please, everybody. Uh, help out humanity. And let's uh, let's make money tomorrow. This should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and let's see if we can get this thing going. Um, who knows what, what GameStop's going to do? Who knows? Uh, we're going to be in for some possible fun, fun, fun here. Um, and... Uh, you know, maybe SoFi can come up tomorrow, Matterport can come back tomorrow, and all our other stocks will go higher too, and, you know, we'll just get richer. That, that'd be cool. I, I'd like to have that. Anyway, uh, you know, what can I say? Love the show. I love you too, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, and have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 8.30 in the morning, bright and early. And let's see if we can make this market go even higher, okay? Until then, this is Bruce from Creston, British Columbia, where I have been vaccinated. And uh, we're looking good. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye for now.